Okay, so the context here is that for a course, I made this website in Django that has a list of car dealerships. And instead of the data for the car dealership being hosted uh, in the same website itself, it's actually, it's supposed to be set up so that all these car dealerships are hosted in someone else's website, someone else's API. And this website is just calling uh, those endpoints to get the data. So for example, for this call, car dealership, it has uh, two different users who have given reviews. And if we want to add a review for that same car dealership, so I'll And now when I go back to that car dealership, you'll see we've, we've added a review. So in this case, the backend that's making that happen is in Node.js. In the course, the cloud API they gave us actually stopped working, but you could still get access to the data. So you could just make a, a simple version yourself, which is what I'm doing here. Okay, so instead of working with uh, data that's a user posting a review. I'm going to just show basically that same database, but the data itself is just going to be a subscriber. And the subscriber has a name and an email and the date that they signed up. So we will do npm init. And then it's going to ask us what the package name is. So we'll say YouTube subscriber database. Or what we want to call our project version. Let's call it version one. Description implements uh, mongoose based database for, for subscriber entries. Uh, test command, we're not doing tests right now. And so all that mostly did was make this package.json, which describes our, uh, our node project here. And normally, sometimes, like let's say you're using someone else's code, you would simply do npm install and you would get your packages. But in this case, it didn't install anything because you can see there's no dependencies here. But if I go and add the packages I need, so in this case, we need uh, mongoose. So you can see that as we're installing, it's adding it to this list of dependencies. So just so you're aware that you can then, when you're sharing your code, you don't need to include this large node modules folder because all your dependencies will be here. And when you type npm install, it will automatically uh, install all of these uh, just as it added it here. Okay, so now we want to initialize our server. So we need our express object. We're going to call it an app. We need mongoose because that's the type of database we're working with. I'm going to define it on port 3000 and then this will be a line to connect to our database. Uh, if there's an error it will tell us there's an error and then only one time when it opens um, we want to send a message saying that it has successfully connected to the database. That uh, for our example, we're going to have <clears throat> have the data located at this uh, subscribers route. So we're going to say const so subscriber routes. It's going to require routes subscribers, which I haven't created yet. But we want to create a folder, call it routes. In routes, we're going to call a file named subscribers and. Before I put anything in that file, it would probably be better for me to first make the model. So, new folder, models, and file subscriber, because this is the model that the subscribers route is going to be working with. 
we're gonna describe our schema like this. So this is kind of like the columns in an Excel sheet. So one subscriber has a name, a username, an email, and the date they subscribed. And here we can define things like the username is unique and the email is unique and then also default values which will be helpful later so you don't need to define all this but it's quite useful to do so and you will see why later so at the end just like any javascript module we say module exports mongoose model subscriber subscriber and this lets us say uh, what the name of this model will be when it's accessed by uh, other parts of the code. So with that in mind, we go back to subscribers, where we're going to define the routes. And then now we can say subscriber is uh, this model that we just defined. This is a route, and we're using Express. So express.router, but we need express as well. So we have our definitions here. And what we're going to do is set up the get, create, update, and deleting routes. So right now, I think I've stopped running the server. Let's see. So if I do a get request to the route that we're about to make, for example, oh, it's still up. So it gives us all the users that have been added to the database. If we do post request, we can add users. So I'll go to the body. We're going to get rid of these uh, private variables. Those are generated by Mongoose uh, automatically. Because just like a row in a spreadsheet usually has a unique index, that's uh, the mongoose's way of making sure it always has a unique index to refer to the data by. So send, and here we made a new user. And then just to go back to trying to send duplicate data without removing uh, the private variables, you'll see that it'll still say uh, that it can't add this user because the username and the email already exist. So that's to create one to delete. Let's say we want to delete this user. I think I set it up to delete by email. So we send a delete request to this route, send, and then it deleted this user. And if we go back to the command that gets all the users, you can see that default user number two is no longer there. Okay, so to make these routes, we basically just make a router function for each. So we say router.get uh, async and the idea here is that it takes time to get data from the database so you need a way to handle that you can use promises or you can use async and then on a wait every time you try and uh, get data from the database. Uh, so we're going to try catch. Right, it won't run yet because I need to add this right here. And we have an issue. Oh, it's because, right, part of me, it's because I have to go module dot exports. And then at this point, you'll notice that I keep having to type in node server.js, and you actually don't need to do that. You can say it with, with a package called nodemon, so npm install nodemon. And then I wonder if I can instead say, if I just do nodemon, server.js uh, no. okay well another way to do it is instead of node server.js we just do nodemon server.js and then you say npm start
And now every time you make a change, it'll automatically refresh this text here. So I'll just say message and save. And you'll notice that it updated right away. Okay, so our server is running. We now need to update the, all the different routes to get our functionality. So let's go back to subscribers. So when we send it, it should just give us an error message. Send subscribers not defined. That's the message. Okay, so what we do is we say const subscribers equals, and then because we're accessing the database, we say await subscriber dot find. So now we see that we get an empty list because we haven't added any subscribers to this uh, new database. So let's do that. And to add subscribers, it needs to be a post request. So we'll do a new route that is post request. way I'm going to do this is we'll say for let your name and request dot body and we'll say let new subscriber equal new subscriber and we'll say new subscriber Field name equals press dot body. And we want this also to be in a try and catch. And then we want to then new subscriber dot save to add it to the database. Um, but whenever we interact with the database, we need to await it to complete. So now post, and then we're going to put this user back. Let's put the first user back too. And then now when we get the list of subscribers, you can see that there is two, which is the two that we just added. I wanted to first do it um, in this way, where you would literally say new subscriber dot name equals the request body dot name. But if you do this, um, you're now manually typing for each model, like what the names are. And then if you change the spelling, you have to change the code as well. So it's better to just figure out how to do a for loop whenever you can over what the properties are. And we'll see that'll help with the update method as well. Okay, so we now have a way to add subscribers. We want a way to update subscribers, which is a, a patch method, like patching a boat. Okay, so now we're going to patch. And we're going to change this to, let's say, Henry Ross. Oops. Henry Ross. Send. And now when we do another get command, you can see that, oh, that's interesting, nothing happened. Let's see. Oh, right, pardon me. Now I have to say updated subscriber equals await.save. So await updated subscriber.save. But that's just something to be aware of that has actually tripped me up before too, that you get this success, but you haven't actually double checked if you saved it. Because here we didn't even have the, the save line there, and we gave a, a false positive basically on the success. Okay, so now we're gonna run it. And there, you can see now we updated the name for the second entry and we will 
we'll format that this real quick before moving on. Okay, so now we want to be able to delete this entry. So delete um, default email one send. Okay, so it did work. Well, let's double check. Get Right, so it did delete it, but you actually could also um, get rid of this and just say find one and delete it. And that will accomplish the same thing. We've deleted one entry, but something to note is, let's say we even come up with a way to delete all entries. Delete all, and we'll send our get command. So in this case, I now have these three users, and then let's say I delete all. Pardon me. Send. So it's all just all the subscribers are deleted, and then let's say you're trying to make some fundamental changes. You go to your subscriber model, and you say, you know what, the username doesn't have to be unique. So we'll save server we'll start patching sorry we'll start adding users again so Henry Ross 1 default email 1 Henry Ross 2 default email 2 send these are now our two users and then let's say we try to post a case where the username is different but the email is the same, and we send it. It actually won't let us do that. And the reason why is that our, our schema is still there. It would be, I think, subscriber.collection.drop function. And this is just a callback function, so what happens if it can't drop the data for whatever reason? So we will start again and say delete all. Post, we'll create our users again. So the first user, create the second one. So we now have our two users again. And they've made the change now where the email we want the email to be unique, but the username can be the same. So make Henry Ross 2 have the same name as Henry Ross 1, and we'll keep, we'll use a different email. Okay, so send. So now when we get it, we were able to add the other user uh, because we had to actually drop the collection entirely. And there's, there's other ways to do it. You can do, I mean, you can ask chat GPT the different ways, but there's another method called drop index to specifically just drop um, like name, like the index that you're no longer, that you don't want the, the old properties from, etc. And I think that was all I wanted to go over. So